In my very first video almost a year ago, I built a simple motorized jig for winding Tesla coils. It's worked really well, but I want something more automated that can wind a variety of coils, whether they're for transformers, electromagnets, antennas, chokes, etc. In this video, I'll show how I designed and built a machine for doing just that. I designed the machine in SolidWorks to be built mainly from T-slot railing and 3D printed parts. To power it, I used 12 volts, which can either come from a wall wart or a battery with an XT60 connector, which is common for remote-controlled toys. For the brain, I used an Atmega328 and created a front panel with an LCD display to interface with the machine. For the first version, I built, I used a 500 RPM DC gear motor with a magnet on the rotor and a Hall effect sensor to count turns. So here's how it all went together. Now that the machine is mostly assembled, let's take a look at how the controller board works. 
board can take up to 30 volts and regulates it down to 5 volts for the logic supply which powers an Atmega 328 chip. The Atmega drives the gate for a MOSFET which controls the motor and a Hall effect sensor counts the number of turns the motor has made as the magnet on the rotor passes by it. That information is fed to a stepper driver which turns the stepper motor to make the wire follower go back and forth along the length of the coil. A 16x2 character LCD display is driven over the I2C bus from the Atmega328 and the user interface occurs with these five buttons. The last piece of the circuit is the programming header which allows the Atmega chip to be reprogrammed without removing it from the board. Okay, let's try it out real quick. As you can see, the wire follower runs off feedback from the motor rotation, so if I hold the motor in place, its movement is paused. Now let's try to actually wind a coil. The control console lets me input all the parameters of the coil, and then asks me to confirm those parameters before I start the winding. Then, the wire follower is positioned using the manual jog buttons and the coil form is set in place. The idler block is tightened down to keep the coil from popping out of place during winding. Then I start the run. It technically worked, but I wasn't really happy with the results. I made several more coils, and they all turned out looking similar to this. If everything worked perfectly, the wire follower would be in lockstep with each rotor turn, winding a nice even pattern back and forth along the length of the coil like this. The end result would be a perfectly square cross-section coil without any bumps or high or low spots. The problem is that the Hall effect sensor would sometimes fail to count a turn, and so the wire follower would stay in one spot longer than it should have. If this happened near the front or back of the coil, it would start stacking up wire in that one spot, and even if there were no more miscounts, the subsequent layers would have a skew to them. Rather than trying to tweak the rotor sensor, I decided to remove the brush DC motor and replace it with a stepper motor. This would eliminate the follower synchronization problem, but also give me more control over the speed and direction of the rotor. I cleared off the section of the board where the DC motor drive components used to be and installed another A4988 stepper driver to control the rotor. The schematic looks pretty much the same except instead of the MOSFET drive circuitry I have another 4988 driver board and the rotor stepper. I initially had trouble getting the 4988 boards to work because the online guides show that the reset and sleep pins can be tied together and the board's pull down resistors will do the rest of the work. But depending on what kind of cheap Chinese knockoff you got, those pins may not have pull down resistors, and I found that I needed to momentarily pulse the reset and sleep pins low with my Atmega chip during startup to make the driver work. So if you're struggling with one of these breakout boards, knowing that might help you. I also pulled the micro step pins MS1 and MS2 to 5 volts, which put the driver into 8th step mode, so that a full rotation required 1600 steps. This helped with resolution, but also dramatically reduced noise and jitter. Okay, let's see how it runs. Pretty good. Seems like a much cleaner solution than the DC motor with the analog hall sensor. The next thing I did was throw away the wire follower and build a new design that had an adjustable feed point. The original design had a feed point relatively far away from the coil, so it was pretty easy for the wire to stray off one way or another because the angular change was so small. Ideally, the wire should be fed as close to the coil as possible. This way, any deviation from the position of the wire follower causes a much larger angle which requires much more force. Thus, the close feed point makes the wire much more likely to stay in place where it's supposed to be. To accomplish this, the new wire follower had a rail that a sliding feed block could be mounted on and then tightened in place with a set screw. This way I could ensure a close feed point for whatever coil diameter I was working with. Another very important factor in reducing winding errors is keeping the line tight at all times. To do this I printed some blocks with foam pads on them to press against the wire spool and cause enough friction that the wire would always be tight during winding. Ok, let's see how the machine works with those improvements. Right away I see a problem. The fact that the motor is stopping and starting is causing the wire to go slack between turns, which we definitely can't have. So I'll have to change the code to make the rotor and follower run continuously. 
And while I was changing things, there was one other winding problem I noticed. Even if the rotor doesn't lose synchronization, the leader lag offset of the follower can still cause the wire to spend too much or too little time on one part of the coil. To help solve this, I added limit switches that the follower would hit on either end of the coil. This would reset any drift error that might have accumulated and help ensure an even distribution of windings. Definitely a huge improvement over the first few runs. There's still some obvious winding errors, but the distribution is relatively even. I think with some tweaks to my code, I could make the windings almost perfect, but first I wanted to see how repeatable the process was, so I printed a dozen more coil formers. About an hour later I finished winding them all, and they came out pretty much identical, with almost exactly the same resistance and inductance between all 14 of them. They definitely work well as electromagnets, but of course the machine would also be useful for loop stick antennas, transformers, generator coils, or inductive chokes, which are all things I build and use fairly frequently for this channel. This was definitely worth the time I put into it, and it'll be a workhorse for several of the upcoming video projects I'm working on, so definitely subscribe if you want to stay tuned.